Hi, boys and girls. This is Miss Backstrom. And all week, last week, we were learning about living things and what all living things can do. And I told you that this week we would learn a little bit more about each of those four things that all living things can do. So I have a little PowerPoint presentation that you're going to be watching, and it's what you're seeing on your screen right now. Um, I decided to screen record myself so I could talk you through it. And also because I don't know if all of you have PowerPoint on your computers at home. So you get a little video of me talking during our PowerPoint. So this one says all living things breathe, but they do it in different ways. And we're going to see all different animals and plants and see how do they breathe in different ways. So here we go. How do we breathe? Go ahead and tell someone at home, how do you think that we breathe? What do we use to breathe? Let's look and see. We use our lungs to breathe just like other mammals. And on your screen, you see a picture of a man standing there and that orangish part, those are the lungs. That's where your lungs are. If you put your hand right on your chest and take a deep breath in and then out, you feel your chest go up and down. That's because our lungs are kind of like balloons. They suck in, when we suck in air, the air goes right into our lungs and they fill up like a balloon and get bigger. And then when we breathe out, they get smaller because the air is going out of them. Now on the next slide, you're going to see what real lungs look like. Are you ready? This is just a picture of lungs that somebody made on a computer. But the next slide is what your actual lungs look like. Are you ready for it? There you go. That's what our lungs really look like inside of our body. That's the color that they are, if they're a healthy lung, and that's what they look like. So we use our lungs to do some breathing. If we didn't have lungs to breathe, we would not be alive. So the next clip, we're going to watch a little video, and I'm gonna turn the volume down because it gets very, very loud, okay? about how our lungs work. Kids Health presents How the Body Works with Chloe and the Nerves. And then the gallbladder stands up and finishes my joke. I mean, the gall of that guy. Hold that thought, Nerve. What's this? Hmm. Fifth annual body land the lung race. The duo that gets into, and then out of the lungs first, wins a prize. Prize? A prize, Chloe! Oh my dear heavens, a prize! Hmm. If the time on this poster is right, the race is about to start any minute. Yikes! We better get into our running out. A nerve is always ready for a race. Chloe's too. To the racetrack! And they're off! The kidneys are in the lead, followed by the eyeballs and the ears. Chloe and the nerve are in dead last. Chloe, let's pick up the pace, shall we? This isn't working, and I'm breathing really hard. You're breathing hard because your body needs more oxygen. Oxygen is in the air we breathe. When you're breathing hard, your lungs can take in more oxygen, and your heart is beating faster to get that oxygen all around your body. In we go! You know where we're going? Of course, into the respiratory system, and more specifically, the lungs. Ugh, this is gross, nerve. Chloe, you Let's get out of here, Chloe. When you inhale, air comes into your nose or mouth, and then down your windpipe, 
also called the trachea, at the end of the trachea are two large tubes called the bronchi. They lead to two large organs responsible for breathing, called lungs. One bronchus goes to the left lung, and the other one to the right. The lungs inhale air with the help from your chest muscles and diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle under the lung. As you breathe in, your diaphragm contracts and flattens out. This allows it to move down, so your lungs have more room to expand as they fill up with air. So when you exhale, everything happens in reverse, and the air goes out the way it came in? Exactly! Here we come! This is the lungs? Nerb, it's just another set of tubes. The lungs have tons of these smaller and smaller sized tubes called bronchioles which can be as small as the thickness of a hair. The end should be right after the next one. Here we come! Nerd, where are we? The alveoli. Fancy word. This is where the magic happens. Where oxygen from the air we breathe gets absorbed into the blood. Alveoli are tiny air sacs at the end of each bronchiole. There are about 600 million alveoli in the lungs. Each has a mesh-like covering of very small blood vessels called capillaries. Oxygen travels into the blood through the alveoli into the tiny capillaries that surround them. Fantastic! Oh, right. We've got a race to win. But before we go, I should explain the process of exhaling. The air you breathe in is different than the air you breathe out. The most important gas in the air is oxygen. Every one of your body cells needs oxygen to stay alive. Deep inside the lungs, your body takes oxygen from the air and delivers it to the bloodstream. Then your heart can pump oxygen-rich blood all around the body. Then the process operates in reverse, letting your body get rid of a gas called carbon dioxide, which is waste gas the body doesn't need. Carbon dioxide is carried by the bloodstream to the lungs. Then the lungs exhale it out of the body. Nerd, we're falling further and further behind in the race. No worries, I'll kick it into Nerve Hyperdrive. We're doing it! We're winning! Nerve, no! We did it! We won! The crowd goes wild! Why is everyone so quiet? Uh, Nerb, we won the race like 45 minutes ago. Oh. So in that video, we saw how our lungs work and we learned that our lungs and our body need what's called oxygen. That's something that's in the air that we breathe in. So our next slide we're going to talk about how another animal breathes. Sorry. Okay. This one says, how do fish breathe? Now you might be wondering, how do fish breathe? They live underneath the water. How do they get the oxygen from the air if they're not out in the air? Okay. So fish are special animals and they use a special part of their body called their gills to breathe underwater. This picture shows a picture of gills that are kind of open and sucking in some water. This one shows those slits on the side of a shark because a shark has gills. We don't see the inside of them in this picture like we do here, but they use these special things called gills to suck in water and they actually take oxygen out of the water. And they do that with gills. We cannot breathe underwater like fish can because we don't have gills. If we breathed water into our lungs, that would make us choke. And if you've ever had a drink and you drank too fast and you choke on it and start coughing, that's because that liquid goes down into your lungs. Okay, it goes down the wrong tube into your breathing tube rather than the one that goes to your tummy. So fish have a special thing called gills. They don't have lungs at all, but their gills can take oxygen out of the water. 
Let's look a little closer at what gills look like up close. Now these pictures are of fish and their gills. Remember those little slits that they had on the other page? If they lift those little slits or those little lines up, this is what's underneath. This is the part of their body, their gills, that actually takes oxygen out of the water. And we're going to listen to another little video clip on how that happens. I'm gonna turn our volume down because it's very loud. Okay, and here we go. Hey, Animal Jammers. Got a question in here from Dr. Wendy Dolphin who wants to know, how do fish gills work? Do they breathe water? Great question. Yeah, fish do breathe water. They pull water into their gills and in their gills are these in intricate networks of capillaries which carry blood and they're very thin walled. And when the water, which has oxygen in it, comes close to those thin walled capillaries, pulls the oxygen in, and then the, the whole bloodstream can use that oxygen. So the gills are really the most important part of a fish for breathing water. It takes a lot of energy, so a lot of a fish's energy budget is dedicated just to, just to breathing. We, when we breathe, our air has about 21% oxygen, but in the water, water only has less than 1%. So it takes a lot of water to get in the oxygen into a fish's bloodstream. Okay. So the fish are using those gills to get oxygen out of the water, but there's not as much oxygen, like she said, in the water as there is in the air. So they have to suck in a lot of water through their gills to get the oxygen that they need to breathe. Okay, so we're going to go on to another um, topic. And, oh, we don't want to start that again. This one says, how do plants breathe? And this one, you might say, well, how does a tree or a flower breathe? They don't have a mouth like we do. They don't have gills like a fish does. But a plant has something really special on its leaves and petals that help it to breathe. Let's take a look. Right here, it shows us a diagram of a plant and it shows us an up close picture. This little picture at the top shows what it would look like if we could look at this through a microscope or we could look really, really close to that plant. And it has what's called stomata. It says plants use little holes in their leaves called stomata to breathe. So the plant actually has little holes that take air in and let it out. But a plant is a little different the way that it breathes. If you remember back to the video about lungs, they said that humans and mammals and even fish with their gills breathe oxygen. Okay. And remember they said that they exhale or let out a gas called carbon dioxide. Well, the plants don't want to breathe oxygen like us. They take the carbon dioxide, a different kind of gas that's in the air. And then when they let gases back out, it comes out as oxygen that we can breathe. So plants really help us by creating oxygen. Okay. And let's look at a little close-up picture of those stomata underneath a microscope. If you were to look at a plant under a microscope, this is what the stomata actually look like on a real leaf. And I can see the veins in the leaf, those little lines that we see in a leaf if we look closely. And I see those little holes or those little stomata that suck in the air and take the carbon dioxide and they let the oxygen come back out into the air for us. Now I do have a little video, we're only gonna watch part of it, um, that explains a little bit more about the stomata. And again, I'm gonna turn our volume down because this one gets very loud too. Oh, turned it down a little too much. 
There we go. Demonstration of stomata on a leaf peel. In a plant, the epidermal layer is the outermost layer which contains tiny pores known as stomata. Stomata are found on all above ground parts of plants, including the petals of flowers, petioles, soft herbaceous stems, and leaves. Stomata consist of two specialized cells called guard cells that surround a tiny pore called stoma. Their main function is to allow gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, and oxygen to move rapidly in and out of the leaf. In different plants, distribution, number, size, and type of stomata vary. In general, the stomata are fewer in the number on the upper surface as compared to the lower surface of the leaf. To do the experiment, we okay, and we're gonna stop it there. But in that video, they told us also that the stomata is not only on the leaves, but also the petals of a plant and the stem of a plant. And there are more stomata or those little holes underneath the leaf than on top of it. So if you're looking for stomata on a leaf, you would really want to look at the bottom of the leaf to find the most of them. But you have to look up really close. That's when a microscope is really handy. So let's go on and we have one more thing to talk about. There, is, there are some animals that live in the ocean that have lungs. Did you know that? There are some animals that live in the ocean that do not have gills like fish, but they have lungs like you and I because they are mammals. Let's take a quick look says whales and dolphins. These two animals live in the ocean, but they are not fish. They're mammals, okay? And they have something special. They have lungs inside their body, but they have what's called a blowhole on the top of their head. And it's this little tiny hole right there. And that's something that they breathe through. They use it kind of like we would use our nose to breathe in and out. A whale or a dolphin can just put their head up above the water just a little bit to breathe in and out because they do need to come up to the surface of the water to breathe every couple minutes. Okay, so whales and dolphins have blowholes. It's kind of like their nose, but on the top of their heads. That's kind of crazy but they also have lungs inside their body, just like you and I. So we breathe in through our nose and mouth and it goes down to our lungs. They breathe in through their blowhole and it goes down to their lungs. Okay, all living things breathe and now you know how each one breathes. I hope you enjoyed this and um, Tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit more about what all living things do. Okay, bye-bye.